Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I like when the United States or you know some countries in the West they say that they try to isolate um, Russia and I think that uh, sometimes they isolate themselves by uh, not speaking with so many countries those countries will communicate and you're gonna be the one who's gonna be left outside. Imagine you go in to a party and you say, you know, let's have 20 people over there and say, I don't talk to you, I don't talk to you, I don't talk to you, I don't talk to you. I isolate all of you and you isolate 15 out of 20. Those 15 will form a group and who's gonna be the isolated? You and your little five country that remained. So it's gonna be what? Who isolated who? So uh, when I say that Russia is isolated, that's just nonsense just because uh, 12 countries uh, don't, uh, don't do business with Russia so we can see it, because they do business, but so we don't see it, it doesn't mean they're isolated. And this uh, comes again as an example. This article comes, uh, this article comes from Reuters, September 15, 2022. Mongolian president says he supports Russia, China, oil and gas pipelines through Mongolia. So who isolates who? So Mongolian president Uknagin Kurelsuk said on Thursday that he supports the construction of oil and gas pipelines through from Russia to China via or via Mongolia. Speaking via translator at a trilateral meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin and China, Chinese President Xi Jinping at a summit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization in Uzbek city, in the Uzbek, Uzbek city of Samarkand, Kurel Suk backed the plans proposing studies of their economic feasibility. Kurel Suk said, and I'm quoting, we also support the construction of oil and gas pipelines to supply natural gas from Russia to China through the territory of Mongolia and propose to study this issue from the viewpoint of technical and econom economic justification. Russian energy giant Gazprom hopes to build the power of Siberia 2 gas pipeline. Two via Mongolia to China with a, with a view to exporting 50 billion cubic meters of gas per year via the route by 2030. No plans for an oil pipeline via Mongolia have yet been formally proposed. Well, well, who's uh, isolated? See, um, if you look on the map, uh, Mongolia is in between these countries uh, and it's uh, <laughs> landlocked, so I don't think they have uh, too many options. It's right in north of uh, uh, China and uh, south of Sib Siberia. So yeah, I think that's very hard for uh, the American uh, uh, democracy and freedom to penetrate there like it penetrated in Afghanistan and Iraq. <laughs> Anyway, um, this, the, the new club is forming and uh, it seems like it's going to have a lot of partners. Contrary to uh, these ideal, ideal, ideologues that are here, that they are just blinded by their hatred and ideology that they have, you know, and blinded by their uh, hatred towards Russia and uh, anything that doesn't follow their... Uh, how should I put it, the narcissistic uh, desires. And uh, in this case, the rest of the world cooperates and it seems like these guys are going to remain uh, uh, left out. The thing is, uh, uh, Russia will bring on the table energy, uh, Iran is gonna be with energy, Venezuela is gonna be with energy. These countries are already in the new club, the second club. And they will uh, probably go with China, which has a large economy. Uh, depends on the market, you know, uh, demand from the United States and the Western countries where it gets the revenue. That's true. And uh, I don't know how well they will stay with technology, but in, in Chinese uh, were never idiots. So 
I think they will be able to at least sustain what they got for some uh, decades and innovate and invent certain things. I mean, they are already uh, doing all kind of uh, genetic research <laughs> and uh, they're way ahead of everybody else uh, because their, um, how do you call it, ethical standards for research is not as these guys who shoot themselves in the foot and they don't have this kind of political correctness and once they find something they sh shovel it sh shove it somewhere underneath something because it's politically incorrect a lot of studies like this came into the states and they were uh, <clears throat> because they were politically incorrect and uh, they will uh, they will they already work on the genes to create certain kind of uh, genes that would help the new generation they're like you say okay i want my child to be like this i want my child to have these uh qualities and all that genetic genetic qualities it doesn't mean that if you have it in you you're gonna necessarily be able to express them so they work on that um, these guys do not because i don't know might disco might discover something that uh, you know <laughs> would be politically incorrect so these guys are gonna have the brains they're gonna have the um resources they're gonna have the economy and they're not idiots all right and they have the nuclear weapons so they can defend themselves on the other hand the initial club the old club with the uh, united states being the boss at least here it doesn't seem like uh, russia and china will be the only bosses because india will come and brazil will come and i don't think they will uh, say okay uh, you're the boss mm, i think they want to be like uh, more democratic we know that's gonna turn into a uh, you know whoever's gonna get stronger is gonna take over and gonna be the leader but it's gonna take decades probably in this case the, uh, the things are already done United States is the big boss and uh, Great Britain is the uh, house uh, servant and the rest are bottom feeders are the ones as I said many times they are there on and on the plantation cutting the sugar cane uh, sometimes friends knocks at the door and it's allowed to come in the house as a house servant for 10 minutes just to peel off potatoes to help the house servant great britain and then is kicked out back on the field so or on plantation so uh, enough with this but that's the way i see it and that's the way i think it is in a kind of a funny way and uh, the, the the first club has no really resources the only resources that, i mean not really they have resources the united states have a lot of resources but if they're allowed to use them because of the weirdos then you have Canada a lot of resources if they are allowed to use them and then uh, about that's about it I'm not talking about Europe Europe is <laughs> depleted zero bye bye they, they just suck energy um, but we can talk about the Arab countries who are gonna be in between and gonna say okay who pays more those guys will not need energy which is the Russians <laughs> these guys gonna need energy so they're gonna make a ton of money unless some regime changes will just happen in uh, the Middle East and then uh, simply they're gonna take the oil without asking. All right, Mongolia, we know on what side you are. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.